Good morning, everybody. It's been a few weeks since we've given you an update on how the garden's doing. Uh, the plants have been in for just a little over three months, I think, at this point. Uh, we were hoping to film an update for you last week, but we unfortunately had a hurricane that blew through right off the coast of uh, the, our area here in Tampa. By the time it made its way to us, uh, it was either a Category 1 or a tropical storm. Um, however, it landed in our area in the middle of the night. Uh, we had a ton of rain, a ton of wind, and um, then after the hurricane actually passed, we had a ton of the outer bands that came through for a couple of days after that. And so we dumped just way too much rain. And so we did lose a couple of these plants uh, to some root rot. Um, so there's only so much you can do over these types of situations. There's some plants that look like they were suffering that we almost would have lost, I think dried out, that we're gonna cut back, allow for the fresh growth to come, and we're gonna put these plants to the test. Like for example, if you look over here, a lot of these canna lilies, these toucan coral canna lilies have um, these beautiful seed pods left, they're kind of, I wish you can see them or touch them in person because they have like almost a rubbery type feeling to them. So it's really cool to add to any of your cut flower arrangements, adds a lot of interest, or just leave here in the garden for some interest, but I don't want them to waste any more energy into these seed heads because if you look right here, there's a fresh new flower um, spike that's about to come out. So I can actually come through and cut these back and allow it to to grow. So we're going to come through, we're going to clean this up, we're going to allow um, uh, some of these to push out some new growth. And then also while we're here, if you look here, we have this beautiful coffee cups elephant ear here that we personally, we really love. These grow, not these variety, but elephant ears in general, they grow pretty wild in our area. I don't know if you can see, but down here, it's cut, it throws off all these pups everywhere, so it would spread out. We're active gardeners. Uh, we love an excuse to be in our garden and deadheading and just being out in nature. So, you know, you could come through right here and just pop like this one off, for example, and pull it out. We have a bird bath uh, that actually we want to put in this space. Uh, it's a concrete piece that we, it's our first concrete piece, actually. So we're excited to get it in its area, uh, in this spot, and we're gonna actually dig this up and put it into a container. We're not getting rid of it. And I think at the very end, we're gonna hit everything with the fertilizer. It's time to, to fertilize our plants. We haven't been able to over the last couple weeks, two weeks almost now, because of all the rain. So the only time we had a chance to get out here was in between the rain, so everything was soaked, so it doesn't make any sense for us to start putting more fertilizer and more water if we're already suffering some root rot in the area. So. Um, I think we're at a position today that we can hit them with some fertilizer and then, uh, you know, come back in a couple weeks and give you another update. You can see, look at all this new growth coming through. Can you see that? So we're gonna cut it back and just let it fill back out and see what happens. So here we go. This will be the third time we've cut the Meteor Shara Verbena back in this area, and the pollinators can't get enough of it, which is a huge bonus in our book. The last time we cut them back, they were full of blooms again in a matter of weeks, so they'll be looking great in a matter of no time. A few stalks from the toucan coral canna lilies blew over in the storm, so I'll remove them so they don't smother the Blue My Mind morning glories that are planted under them. There's not much left on this one for me to keep. So I'm gonna actually just follow this all the way. See, this is already spent. This is on the very end. There's no more that's gonna come out of this one. This is the end of this bloom spike. So we're just gonna follow it all the way back down to right here and cut it out. All right, so for example, this one we need to cut out. Here's a perfect example of a plant that you can use your judgment on. If you notice, this one plant has several seed heads that have already formed because it's done, but you'll notice there's brand new flowers coming here and there's a whole new flower coming here. So we can just come in through here, clean this up a little bit. It looks cleaner. It'll allow it to stop spinning the energy into creating the seed heads and we'll still be able to enjoy some of these flowers a little bit longer. So you can see in here, see this is a brand new one. See the difference? This one's just about to start putting its flowers out. So if we're cutting these back, you can actually see, look how small they used to be. When we first planted them, this is the height of the flowers. So we're gonna cut out this old growth, get it cleaned up, leave all the new growth that's coming. Here's an example of what the seed pod looks like when it's done. Um, see how it turned brown? 
and inside of them you can see there's actually seeds now these seeds are not going to germinate um, they are a sterile variety but you know it's still kind of nice to know what would happen if you let them be so instead of the plant sending energy into creating these seeds we're actually going to cut them back and send more energy and just sending out new tubers and more growth for more flowers and you're going to see here in just a couple weeks this thing is going to be full again So I'll just cut it here and let that be. I'm gonna do the same with this one. Because right behind it, you can see the fresh bloom stock. So this one I'm pretty comfortable with, I'm happy. Um, it's gonna send out some new shoots, so that's good for that one. It'll also be good to thin this out a little bit to allow for more air circulation and more airflow. Don't be scared to come through and, and trim your plants or cut them back. Um, that's, uh, if anything, even if it fails and you cut it back too hard, that's the only way you learn. Sometimes you can watch YouTube videos, you can read a book, uh, but sometimes you just really need some, some practice. You just need to get in there and, and try it yourself. So don't be afraid. You can see the difference from the ones on the pot to the one that you put on the ground. It's like oh insane. God. At this point in the day, it's too hot in the Florida sun, so we'll drag this guy into the shade and call it a day. All right, everyone, it's the next morning. As you can see behind us, we got the bed cleaned up pretty nicely. Um, there's a few empty holes right now that we're going to see if any of the plants are going to come back and, uh, and fill those spaces. If not, we'll just uh, plug a few plants in there later on. Um, but for the time being, we're actually going to be moving over to this section where we remove the uh, coffee cups colocasia, the elephant ears. Instead, we have a beautiful concrete piece that we want to put. It's a bird bath that we've had for probably about three or four months now, but we haven't had a chance to find where we're going to put it. So we're going to go ahead and place it there. I think it's going to look really nice. Jose and I would really like to be able to see it from our office window right here. First, create a, a level space for this concrete pad to sit on. Then the water, or the bird bath, excuse me, is gonna rest on top of that. And I'm hoping that when it's all said and done, all of this will be covered up with mulch. So I really want this to be probably flush with the ground so where I can at least have the mulch come up to the edge of the bird bath and you won't even see this underneath it. So, um, and then once we're done with that, we're finally gonna set up the camera and fertilize this bed. We're the type of gardeners that are guilty of buying something for the garden well before we're ready for it. And this piece is no exception. I brought over the base that the pedestal will sit on and spent some time leveling it out. You want to make sure it's level from this way and this way, so this is good to go. Now that the pedestal for the bird bath is situated into place, I can add the top that will hold the water. We fell in love with this piece once we got close enough to notice all of the detail and we appreciated how the overall appearance matched the aesthetics we were going for. Once the top of the bird bath clicked into place, I could see that the scale of the piece was perfect for this location. Lastly, there's a small dove that sits in the middle. All that we have to do is fill it up before we can call this project completed. Jose and I are thrilled with how this turned out. Now we can move on to getting this garden fertilized. To ensure that our garden is set up for success, we adhere to a strict fertilizing schedule. We supplement the plants with water-soluble plant food from proven winners at least once a week. Individual needs will vary depending on your growing zone.
These plants are powerhouses in the garden, flowering non-stop, so you'll want to provide them the necessary nutrients for them to do so. Here in Tampa, Florida, we receive over 55 inches of rain on average every year. So once we hit the rainy season, our mindset switches from making sure the plants are getting enough water to keeping them from getting too much. The excess humidity brings on its own challenges, which we can get into in another video. To finish today's video though, I'm going to transplant the coffee cup elephant's ear into its new container. As you can see, the new one is much larger, allowing the plant space to grow into it over time. I filled it halfway with dirt and then wrestled it out of its old container. You can tell from the roots that a few weeks have passed since we dug it out from the front flower bed, so it's definitely time to be transplanted. It took me a moment to get it situated and leveled before filling the remainder of the container with soil, packing around the root ball well. I'm the kind of person who needs a clean space to work in, so I'm going to take a few moments to wash away the extra soil and rinse off the pot before moving on. I'm going to trim off any of the old or unpleasant looking foliage so it can send that energy into getting acclimated instead. We've had this plant tucked under our entryway for a few weeks, so it will likely be shocked being put out in the sun again for the next few days. To help it get adjusted, I'll supply a little extra water during that time. I also added a little bit of the premium continuous release plant food to the container, so this plant will be good to go for the next six months. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to see the updates on our backyard renovation. And thank you to all of those that have watched and supported that project. As always, thanks for joining us for today's projects, and we'll be back soon in the next video.